that. <laughs> oh, I was laughing. Um, thank you so much, Liz. Um, and you knew me before I even knew me. Um, <laughs> I'd have to read whatever you wrote to find out what I was doing um, when I was growing up. Uh, I, after listening to all the beautiful accomplishments tonight, I really do feel like anything that I have done in, in this city or in my life pales in comparison to the accomplishments and the contributions to New York that the honorees this evening have, have given us. Uh, this is the first time my husband has ever presented me, <laughs> and I knew he would have a field day with this one. <laughs> so I was like, man, I promise you'll enjoy this one. Uh, not, not that I get many uh, awards, but, um, <laughs> uh, you know, when I was told that I was going to, when I was asked and told by um, Ms. Smith that I was going to be a living landmark, at first I thought, God, I'm, am I old enough? Like, do I done enough? I'm not old enough. And then I sort of started to think that I actually um, have lived here for almost 49 years, uh, and I have worked in this city for 48 of those years, uh, including, uh, including the I Love New York um, campaign, we did commercials and I was able to perform with uh, the, the cast of Cats. That was very exciting for me. Um, and it was a, a cabbie who told my mother, you know, that kid should model. And, um, and my mother took him seriously and, and I became a model. So that's, if that's not a New Yorker, then I don't know what is. City. I crawled down the street before I could walk. I'm told that my uh, knees would be scraped and, and that uh, Greta Garbo actually saw me and looked at my mother and evidently gave me a nod of approval. Um, that's true. I don't remember it. Um, but I walked with my parents after having brunch on Easter in this very building in the Easter day in the Easter parade. And I had lemonade stands. I did pogo sticks in front of our building. Um, I celebrated my eighth birthday on the Circle Line. I learned to skate at Rockefeller Center. I thought it was called the Umpire State Building because I thought you were either safe or you were out if you didn't love New York. Um, I performed at Carnegie Hall when I was six years old. I've had many firsts in this city. Not that one, because I was like 39 when that finally was allowed to happen. Marcus Virgin. Um, anyway, <laughs> I, I, I did for a, a brief period of time go to school in New Jersey, and I still lived in the city and I commuted. I did a reverse commute, and you know, people then they started calling me a Jersey girl, and I really took offense to it. I love New Jersey, it's been great, but I'm not. I'm a New Yorker through and through, as my husband said, and my, uh, even though my formal education did happen um, in a little university at, um, in Princeton, New Jersey, um, my real education came from being a New Yorker. And as a kid, my mom, uh, to keep my posture straight, she would literally say to me, stand up tall like the beautiful buildings of New York. Uh, and I remember once I was returning from a flight and I was describing to my mom all the things that I missed about where I lived. And I said, I miss the glistening streets and I miss the rain and the trees and I want to go for a walk in the neighborhood in the park and I love the really good food. And a neighbor in the um, airplane said, where do you live? Excuse me. I said, Manhattan. Because that's what this city was. You know, uh, 